Welcome back. The California primary is just a week and a half away. And with several measures on the ballot geared toward the way Huntington Beach is run, voters in the city are getting a chance to make their voices heard. KCAL's Leslie Marin shows us the topics drawing the loudest division in the community. Huntington Beach is known for its beautiful surf and gorgeous coastline, but the Orange County City, which has long been a conservative stronghold, is making waves when it comes to the state's political and cultural wars. The message you are now sending is one of exclusion. It isn't equity, it's tyranny. Over the last several months, city leaders made several controversial rulings, such as replaced Pride, Black History, and Women's History Month celebrations, with celebrations they claim are more focused on the city's history and restricted books at local libraries from the children's section that some claim may be sexual in nature. But now voters will get to decide on ballot measures that are promoted by conservatives like Mayor Gracie Vandermark and are once again drawing attention. We need to protect the United States and it starts at the, at the polling places. The first measure A would allow the city to monitor who uses ballot drop boxes and most importantly, require voters to show ID in order to cast a ballot during city elections. Critics say it's illegal. Supporters say it would cut down on voter fraud. One of the issues that we've had with a lot of our supporters is they don't fully trust our election system. Some of them have said they've gone to vote, and when they show up to vote, they are told they've already voted. The OC registrar hasn't reported any evidence of recent voter fraud in the city has opponents with the grassroots organization Protect HB, including 30-year resident Carol Dowse, sounding the alarm. To put this just on the ballot in a midterm election was about 480000 That's taxpayer money. So if you're going to start doing that, you should really tell the voters why. The measure has already faced several hurdles. In September, California Attorney General and the Secretary of State sent this warning letter to Huntington Beach that requiring voter ID could violate state law. We spoke to Jessica Levinson, a professor at Loyola Law School. The other big question here is whether or not this proposed law could live together in harmony with the state law, particularly when it comes to elections where there are state and federal and city issues on the same ballot. If the city has to hold their own election, it could cost up to a million dollars to do so. The next measure, Measure B, would limit what flags could fly outside city buildings and property unless unanimously approved by the city council. This was the heated discussion last year when the city council first voted to only allow the American flag state flag, city flag, along with military and POW MIA flags to fly. If approved, that decision would be enshrined into the city's charter. Opponents believe its purpose is to leave out the rainbow flag, which was once approved to fly each pride month. Why would you take something like a flag measure and, and make and shrine it that way? And it's very upsetting to many in the community because it, it's really making a statement that is anti-LGBTQ. The mayor says the measure isn't targeting any specific flag. And I believe it's important for our government to maintain a position of neutrality when it comes to anything that has to do with identity politics. The mayor tells me when it comes to mail-in ballots, if Measure A were to pass, well, IDs would not be required. Now, if these measures were to pass, including one other, it would be the first time since 2010 the city's charter would be amended. Reporting from Huntington Beach, Leslie Maddie, KCAL News.